it would clock me. Yes. But if, that doesn't happen if in If I jumped, uh, jumped onto Mr. Kitka's car <laughs> in the middle of Grahamstown, I would have been Blixen uh, all the way to Blixen Land, to Blixen Land and back. Yeah, with a wooden spoon. While my mother was doing <laughs> syncopated smacking. How many times have I told you that you may not jump on cars? Not the day. <laughs> um, Wednesday morning, and we welcome into the studio Peter Dirk Ace. Thank you. <laughs> it is so wonderful to see you again. I, I don't know when last I saw you. I think the last time I saw you was down in Darling when we were on motorbikes going through the, the town and we came and visited you. Wow. That's right. I think that, that, that was and I had a cat that used to sit on the motorbike and go for a drive. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, fantastic, man. Yes. We still have the bikes coming. The I'm bikes sure coming. you do. Yeah, very nice. I, okay, so be honest now. You have only arrived in Joburg because you were scared of this Cape winter that we <laughs> threw at the moment on our weather. <laughs> and this week we taped the rain and got it. And we actually didn't yeah. get rain until we took our train. Yeah, so the weather was not great anymore. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it's cold. I think it's cold. It never bothers me. You know, if the weather's cold, then I put on something warm. And if it's warm, I put on something cold. So it's not a problem. I love Joburg energy, man. You yeah. know, if I leave a message in Joburg, somebody answers in 10 minutes. If I leave a message in Cape Town, it takes 10 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they cut. <laughs> <laughs> There's one thing about you, Peter. The, you just don't age. No, you really don't. I don't you know, the theatre the theater is a strange thing. Be it because it's live, you've got to be right in front of the queue. You've got to be now, at this moment in time. And that keeps you young. I think age happens when you get left behind, when you stop catching up. And I have to catch up because my audience wants to know what's happening now, not what happened then. I bring the past with me because that's probably the only contribution I can make, having survived the past. Everybody else is just to start from the 11th of February 1990 when Nelson Mandela was beaten to death, you know, the seventh of August. And I believe that we must remember where we come from so we can make sure that culture don't have a permanent future for us. And they have to make sure we stop develop and stop coming back again. What what is your assessment of where we are? First of all, I think we are a relatively healthy democracy because we are more of a flat Freedom of speech, freedom of expression. Um, that means that that's the cornerstone of what democracy means. I mean democracy is always going to be a mess because everybody's fingerprints are on this silver chalice of freedom. That's the good news. The bad news is that we citizens aren't doing our homework. You know, everybody thinks freedom is something that it wears a badge. Hell, man, you've got to fight for tomorrow's freedom every single day. We don't know how to pronounce the names of our cabinet ministers. I'm talking about Vip Mensa and Parker Johanna. Um, we don't read the books about them. Where does the passion end and the corruption begin? We become tourists in our own country, and that's our fault. And I think that's terrible, and I want people to just wake up and say to their children, get involved now. Where are the good politicians? There are good politicians in every party. All we focus on are the rubbish. Mm -hmm. And the rubbish are always on the front page because they want publicity. So you should find the good ones and say, hey man, we're on your side now, get better. So I'm very optimistic in a theatrical way. <laughs> is, is, that, is that where this production is coming from? I hope so. Somebody saw it the other night. I did a, a work in progress in Darling. I do that. That's the great place, the mm -hmm. thing about the Edith Perron. I, I, I write a new show and then I do a work in progress and people come and they, for, a, for a 110 rand they get classy vein and a, a cook sister and a, and a hamburger and the show. And the show might be 10 minutes long or it might be an hour long. And then I stop and start and ask them what do they think. And the, the feedback I got from the people was, we are so tired of being frightened. We are so tired of being depressed. We are so tired of hearing the same negative thing. And suddenly you come to me and say, hey, look what we did. We cut out our ears. You know, we've sort of really knotted ourselves up with nonsense, but still, it's what we did and what we can celebrate. Um, and there's Evita Bezredner, who started life in 1978, and she's still around, and just because she doesn't exist doesn't mean she's not real. And so I know, she is so real. So, you know, so, so in this show, which is hashtag he too, I mean, inspired by hashtag me too, which yeah. is very significant, yeah. and also very easily hijacked by ladies who want publicity, um, Hashtag he too means the men and the boys also get the sticky end of the lollipop every now and then. But when I looked at he T O O, I suddenly saw he T W O. And what does that mean? That means me and Fanny. Have I ever put them together on stage at the same time? No. And this no, is what I do. Haven't. This is what I do. 
But now that's what fascinates me, and yeah. that's what I want to get to in just a moment, is how the hell do you get Tani Evita and Peter Dirk Ace onto stage at the same time? Because, and I'm asking this for two reasons. One is practical, and one is how the hell do both of those egos fit onto one <laughs> stage? <laughs> Bracket. Bracket tune and then we come back to Peter. Okay. So, Chair, what to say about the deal? We made a policy to say we will be paying back. But we would not drop it. Um, but everyone knows that life is hard. You don't need to keep telling us how hard it is, but they're fully aware of it. So, we joke about it and we make fun of it. And sometimes you don't talk about it at all. We talk about you know, your first handbag or something like that. And what's in your handbag. And, and that's because when you put it in your card, you really want to hear about it. I don't think it's there. It's there. You know, I really... I don't think I'm, I'm not I'm not good on comedy, but humor is a yes. very private and personal thing. And laughing at fear makes the fear less fearful. It doesn't make it less lethal, it can still kill you, but you can still look like your eye. We look away. We say, Ooh, don't tell me all of this. Then that thing becomes such a monster that you're frightening to death. Um, and we can see it's quite stupid. We just actually analyze why are you scared of that? Oh, yes, because it was. No, 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 no. And if you laugh at somebody, you think, well, yeah, okay. Uh -huh. And there's nothing better than laughing at these arrogant politicians. They can't take it. Oh, they love it. They, they can't take it. They can't take it. They can't understand it. And, they can't take it. and you're right, so much better as clickbait. Let's talk to him because we know we'll get a great incendiary comment. Alright, well, that hasn't taken the story forward, though. Mm. Just make sure you get your hits on the website. <laughs> yeah. Social media. Oh, yeah. Avita about social media. She's on the Twitter. Is she on the Twitter? She's 140,000 followers. They're all in the same prison outside Ruskin Bone. Never mind. That's remarkable. Are you on the gram? Avita on the gram. What does that mean? It's the gram. No. The gram. Yeah, but the Quran is on Instagram. I avoid all those things. Yeah. God knows. I've spent hours on this. No, I mean, I can't. I mean, I've got a friend who. I, I think she lives her life through social media. And I, I, I think to myself, D don't you have a real life? Well, that's just when people check in. So it's a checking in to learn your term. And I, I think if I was a thief, that would be so helpful. Awesome. That means she's not at home for an hour. I wonder if it's a cardio day, because that's only 20 minutes, but if it's a sweet. Tune, tune, and then get Tune. Based on generation, over the last sort of ten years. Oh God, yes. I mean, it changes from night to night. Definitely, I've got to reinvent my focus and also check this text of who's dying. <laughs> you know, no one made jokes yet. Yeah. Okay, tomorrow, make a joke about death. Um, and I do have a, an audience of my generation. You know, I'm 73, and they are sort of between 60 and 1,000 mm. years old. Um, and so. Um, they get easily offended, which is terribly important. It wakes them up. Mm. Offense is important. It rattles your cage. I don't want to demean or insult. Mm. That's out of the question. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and city by city changes. Cape Town and Johannesburg oh, are God, so yes. different. And Durban so different. Peter Marysburg is so different. So even Northern Joburg and yeah. Southern Joburg yes. are two worlds. I mean, I love that. It's love. In the old days, you did the same show everywhere because it was the same yabas everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And 
And so we are a world in one country. There's no question of it. And I think that's that's great. That's very exciting. Um, and it's got to be. It's got to be. Uh, I've got to be. I've got to listen. Listen to the audience. I, I'm always on stage ten minutes before the show starts, just to hear them come in and the sound and the because that's the live that I've got to get back again. It's great. The cameras are terrifying. The cameras just suck you off and spit you out and do nothing. No wonder my own mum never scared to go in there. When, when I have to film, I don't want to leave the house. I leave the... I can't do a part of it. I have to go to the theatre two hours before the show because I feel safe there. Yeah. And I don't use that in my prop. And read a book or just and have some music. Ah, it's great. Listen to the radio. That's very nice. Find out if the world is ending and I tell my audience and they'll only believe me in four days' time. <laughs> Topicality takes four days to get there. Something really? happens today, but four, within four days, they know. Yeah. If tonight they won't know. A few people will know, but the rest won't know. Mm. Now that's that's changed because people are less interested in what happens than they were. Do you think it's because there's ago. so much more and it's, uh, you're being bombarded as opposed to before and it was just a newspaper or a radio broadcast? But it's almost I'm sure, a, I'm sure. I mean, depends. my generation is terrified of all this stuff, yes. which is a pity. It's like my granny was scared of the phone until she got an electric shock, you know. My father um, won't have a computer because he doesn't need it. So all his emails get sent to me. <laughs> so he's quite happy for me to get them and print them out for him so he can read them, but he doesn't... Oh. I, I read, and I'm going back quite a few years now, but I read a piece of research um, that they were talking about the amount of information that people are subjected to. And I think this was in about 2015. And they said that the amount of information that you were subjected to at the end of the Second World War, 1945, um, in a year, was the same amount of information you were being subjected to in one day in 2015. Oh, I wonder. Yeah. This is Let me It's Mansfield in the morning, Wednesday morning, with Amy Grant and Baby Baby. Peter Dugais, our very special guest in the studio this morning, um, talking about um, the new production that is um, in Johannesburg, hashtag he too, T-W-O. Um, a, a, a fascinating part of it is that it, if, if you look at the poster, it mm -hmm. features Evita Besaidenot and Peter Dirk Ace. Um, now, it's what I alluded to before we went into that tune, um, is how the hell do you get the two of them together? I mean, we know both of them, and we love both of them mm. separately. Um, they've, 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 they've encroached themselves into our hearts and our souls in South Africa. But how would Tanya be to share a stage? Exactly. Um, Peter, uh -huh. <laughs> what, what the hell is happening here? Okay, first of all, I have got enormous amount of footage of Evita from 1981 right through to virtually now with Desmond Tutu, with Nelson Mandela, with Bill Clinton, with, I mean everybody, it just goes on, making the speech at, the, at an anti-apartheid rally in 1988 in London, um, <laughs> making the speech in Berlin to a thousand people uh, where she says, ich bin ein Afrikaner. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so what I did, there was a huge amount of work to find out what to actually use as because it's based on that sentence, just because she doesn't exist doesn't mean she's not real. Uh, so she's on screen f for about 38 minutes of the 70 minutes, and I'm on stage for the rest of the time with characters. I mean, obviously, P.W. Pilater, yeah. who's got to say she was a pretty brave, brave person. You know, that kind of just impersonation of her was shocking. You know, and like that. He's got horns, red horns coming out of his head. <laughs> I've got a, 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 a Pugbueta who's got a halo. <laughs> he, he calls it. No, no, I call it my, I call it my halo a, app. My halo. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a GPS halo, so God knows where I am. Oh. Um, <laughs> so that, uh, and he's very excited because Johnny Clegg and his son, Pete Wirt, are going to do a concert. You know, so, <laughs> so I've got that. And they all sort of refer to Evita's life and, 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 and references to them. And then, of course, now I'll find my puzzle who comes from as she looked in 1981, blonde, and was having that hair with a garden boy, Nimrod, right. who is now the South African ambassador to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, there's a lot of that as well, but it is all anchored in now in the sort of what I call the minefield of, 
of hashtags and hate speech, which is where we are. So, so you and then Evita, then Evita comes on screen and talks to me. I am doing. A, I'm on there with a the Chris Levine silver, looking like Evita that everybody recognises yeah. her, and she gives a speech because she's now being sent overseas by Cyril to uh, get in investment yes. for South Africa. She first makes Bobuti and then they give money. Um, <laughs> and suddenly, in the middle of this, the exact same Evita comes onto the screen and says, "What are you doing? You can't do this now. Did you know about the hashtag Me Too? What about my rights? I'm going on strike." So I mean, she literally says, "You must stop." Maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but I've been told at various stages in the last two years that I have got to stop doing what I'm doing. Young people are saying, you can't do blacks, you're white. I said, I'm not doing blacks. I'm doing a corrupt president called Zuma, and I'll do him forever. They said, you can't do it anymore. It's politically incorrect. So what does that mean? So in the last show, I did Peter Bivuerta, who then does his impersonation of Jacob Zuma. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, democracy actually has its drawbacks. Freedom of speech is a bugger because you can say anything. So as soon as somebody says to me, you can't do that, I think, you want to bet. You yeah. want to bet. Don't say can't. I've got the me. legs, I'll yeah. wear the dress. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh. So that's more or less the balance of but what it, we do. It is the magic of, and I've learned this through radio, the magic of characters. Because characters can get away with murder. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where you would be crucified as Peter Dirk Ace for yeah. saying or doing something. Uh, any one of your your characters can do or say whatever they want to within the framework of their reference. Yes, which is very sure. important. Yeah. you know my big target is racism because I've hated it all my life. But how do you expose racism without showing racism? Yeah. And if I showed racism using words, I, I, first of all, I can't get them out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. The K word, I don't. You know, communist and Catholic are the two K words I can say. In cock, this I can say, but I can't say the other one. Um, but the character can, within the framework of their reference, yes. can actually expose the stupidity of, of prejudice. Um, and uh, yeah, man, it's it's really been an, 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 and I've got 80 characters that I've done in the last 40 yeah. years. Sure. You 80 are different kidding. characters. How do you remember yeah. all of them? I don't need to because some of them have died. You know, as <laughs> as, 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 as uh, uh, Puck says in the sketch, he says, you know. Uh, the biggest revenge that we can have on, on the so-called satire is to know that now it's called a seance because <laughs> I'm the only one left and they're all gone. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward very much to actually surprise the audience with that. But it is, I, I suppose you're in a, a really fortunate position where if you need to expose something or if you feel the need to expose something, you can mm -hmm. create a character who's characteristics would be able to expose that. Well, I mean, Evita is the perfect one. Yeah. Because, I mean, she's got her own reality show on YouTube every Sunday called Evita's Free Speech. We've been doing it for 204 Two. episodes, nearly four years. Yeah. So every Sunday morning, three to four minutes of her, I suppose her attitude to the democracy coming from where she comes from. She's trying so bloody hard not to mm. make a mistake, but she does. Yeah. She does call people monkeys, you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Penny Sparrow flies across the yeah, house. Exactly. Um, but she means it well. She, I can't do that. I won't do that. But she can do that because she also looks nice. And I've had the most, and it's on YouTube on a Sunday and on Monday on the Daily Maverick. And I've had the most incredible feedback from the world because she's on the internet yeah. highway from Bulgaria, from Alaska, from Ghana. People, they all think she's real, <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's, that's really truly. I, I really enjoy the social media to a great extent. Some of it I find very depressing. I mean, I think social media is sometimes like masturbation. It ends up in the palm of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> when well, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> we'll, 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 come, we'll come back to that in a moment. It's uh, Mansfield in the morning. It's Hot 91.9. Our special guest, Peter De Case, will tell you about his production at uh, Peter Turin's Monte Cassino Theatre, which is running until the 18th of August uh, in just a moment as well. Um, Peter, we're going to take a tune now, then we've got to do sport and another tune, okay. and then an ad break, and then we'll talk to you okay. over there. So, so you if you, do you want another cup of tea or anything? No, that'll be nice. That'll okay. be,